Brooklyn, the center of cool, where the smartest and savviest stay on the cutting edge of politics, culture, and health. Faking it till we make it, it's a way of life. And sometimes we get too far along in conversations to admit we have no idea what we're talking about. Everyone's got things they're a little too embarrassed to ask. Hey, can we ask you guys a couple questions? Nope, not, not into it, not into it. Good thing I'm not. I'm Amy Benziger, and I've got no shame. There's a bodega on every block and a cafe on every corner in Brooklyn. So why is it so hard to find something to eat? We're bombarded from every angle with how food is going to kill us. Dairy, soy, gluten, and GMOs, whatever the hell they are. How many people do you know these days that suddenly have a food allergy? But can it be that all this stuff is really that bad for us? I've jumped on the bandwagon, but if I'm being honest, I don't really know why I'm not supposed to eat this stuff. And I have a suspicion no one else around here does either. I'm on an all air diet until I get some answers. Okay, salt free cardboard. Don't want that. Probiotics, what does that mean? So I eat goat cheese, but I don't eat dairy cheese because I heard there's something about- Goat cheese is dairy cheese. No, goat cheese is not dairy cheese. Absolutely it is. No, no, no. There's cow's milk cheese, which is goat, which is dairy, and then there's goat, which is non-dairy. A hundred percent goat milk is dairy. No. Why goat and cow milk. Because cows have like four stomachs, and it has to go through all the stomachs. Where do you even learn these things? I think it's something that if the if the milk went through all the different stomachs, it becomes more processed in those in those stomachs. What do you love to eat? Pizza and ice cream. Do you have any food restrictions or food allergies? I am gluten and lactose intolerant. So you love to eat pizza, but you are gluten and lactose intolerant. Correct. I cannot have any of the things that I like. What do you guys love to eat? Pasta. Yeah. <laughs> pasta. pasta all the time. So are there any things that you guys don't eat because you just don't think you should? Well, pasta. Well, pasta. <laughs> Man, I try to like eat organic as much as possible. Just bought a juicer. Oh, good for you. Yeah, try to keep everything healthy. Yeah. yeah. But it's not. Good. Summer bodies are made in winter. Um, because I don't like putting something in my mouth that I don't know what is, so I don't like processed food. I like making my So you own. don't like going on new dates? Do you have any friends who have food allergies? Yeah, plenty. Uh, definitely gluten-free. Uh, that's a big one. Uh, yeah, I've got a few like lactose intolerant friends. Can't drink milk and can't eat eggs. Is that the same thing? So I refuse to eat organic. I refuse to eat all these health food things they put up in Brooklyn. Okay, they can eat what they want to eat. Just don't try to, you know, force that uh, organic or vegan stuff on other people. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Next thing you know, they're going to be taking over the world. Uh, they've already tried. Look around Brooklyn here, okay? They've destroyed the East Village. I try not to eat gluten whenever I can. I try not to eat dairy. I try not to eat soy. I attempt to not buy that much sugar, but that sort of falls to the wayside when I see chocolate. All of my products that I use are paraben-free, sulfate-free, and typically plant-based. I don't eat any meat, except when there's a really good hamburger, but I don't make any meat at home. I only buy organic wine. I try to only buy organic vegetables. Yeah, that's about, that's, that's about all the food restrictions I have. Don't worry, I can't stand myself either. Coffee, love you. I miss you. It's definitely dairy. Does it say it's dairy? Yeah, it contains less lactose, but it's oh. definitely dairy. Okay, so it's lactose free, but not dairy, but it's not dairy free. What does that mean? Oh, I mean, that's baby food. Who would feed their kids this? But, at the, you know, actually, if you look at it, these probably have less calories than anything that I'm eating. So why is eating Oreos so bad for you? I have no idea. Also, you know, Oreos are vegan. Really? Yep. Oh. All right then. Yeah, game on. Accidentally vegan food list. It's on there. Bacon bits are also vegan, apparently. Gross. Oreos may be vegan, but they're chock full of one of the worst offenders, or so I hear, gluten. What is it? I have no idea, but I'm terrified of it. Do you guys know what gluten is? Oh, yes, uh, my sister is, um, she has celiac disease. Oh, okay, so what yeah. is it? Um, it's just, 
I uh, can't really explain it. It's like your body can't process the gluten, so you just can't eat it. Or like, what is gluten? Isn't it like a like a fat or something? I don't know. Do you guys know what gluten is? Yes. Gluten? Yeah. What is it? It's something that's uh, in flour. Uh, isn't it a compound or some sort of thing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes, I know what gluten is. What is it? It's, um, it's a thing that is very common in all the foods and uh, it's not at all healthy. Apparently we're all gluten intolerant, so... Oh, we're all... Oh, where did you hear we're all gluten intolerant? What does that mean? Uh, well, I don't really know. <laughs> One of my best friends can't have any gluten. Do you like them a little less because of it? No, of course not. No? no you don't find them just a little bit annoying? No. Like, you don't sometimes forget to invite them out to dinner? No. no. Okay. All right. Well, you're <laughs> no. a better person than I am. Sometimes the gluten-free thing, I think people are like, do you really have a gluten problem yeah. or is it trendy? Are you just trying to get in a bikini in a few months? Yeah, exactly right? right. Clearly, most of us don't know what gluten is or what it really does to us. I feel better that I'm not alone, but I'm also starving. And let's be honest, I'm basically wasting away to nothing. Hi. So this has gluten in it, right? It's gluten pizza. How much would it cost if I just licked it? Thanks so much. Is the falafel sandwich gluten-free? Is it dairy-free and soy-free? Yeah, like just free of those things. Like, does it have sulfates, like sulfate-free? I'll just, I'll just have one. Oh my God, it's so delicious. Right. And then why do you have dairy? Dairy, I think because my skin breaks out. Okay. And um, why no, what's, no soy, right? Soy because it mimics you being pregnant. Who said that? My friend told me that it makes girls, it mimics girls getting pregnant and so you get fat here and in your outer thigh. So, so sulfates I can't eat because it makes my skin, uh, my fingers swell. It makes your fingers swell? Yeah, it makes my fingers swell up and my, it makes my face really red. How much do you think is or is reality, and how much do you think is like you making it up because of what you've heard, what people are telling you? I think probably 60-40, but I think that's what we need to find out. Okay. Okay, now that I've had my last street sandwich, I'm ready to face the music about gluten. I head to meet Mickey Agrawal, who started a gluten-free restaurant with a mission I can get behind, making fat-free pizza that helps you lose weight the more you eat it. Hey, hey how's it going? I'm hey, Amy. Vicky. Hey. What are you? Oh, well, thanks so much for having me over today. I'm so excited. Yeah, I've heard so much about your fat-free pizza. <laughs> Um, it's, it's actually not fat-free, it's, it's gluten-free. What we're trying to do is promote whole health, but still provide people with the best, like their favorite comfort food, which is pizza. So you're telling me I can be healthier by eating pizza? Totally. Absolutely. Welcome to our kitchen. Thank this you. This is our kitchen. So, where, what are we going to be making today? Uh, we should make the uh, white wine pizza. I think we're in the skinny bitch. Yes. The most popular one. The skinny bitch, I yeah, like that. Right. Sounds like a lot of my friends. So, Maestro, what do we do? Take two scoops, put them here and here, and just kind of use the back of the spoon and move it around. All right. So, what is gluten and what did it ever do to you so that you hate it so much? I don't hate it. I just... You seem to really hate it. Like you've, you've got some beef with gluten. So gluten is a wheat protein. Okay. It's basically the thing that holds the, the elasticity of the bread together. It is a natural inflammatory. It does cause digestive issues. It does cause a little bit of a, you know, um, joint pain. Like a muffin gut. A little bit of a muffin gut. Yeah. So most important ingredient, how do we get some cheese on here? Absolutely, a circle and circle. Around. Okay. I'm used to doing this with icing, but going directly in my mouth. So how much do you think that this is a made up thing and a fad that's been created? It's actually not a fad, right. it is very real. Right. And when you stop eating gluten, you just feel, you just feel lighter. So is that why you look so young? Well, <laughs> is it, go on. Is it gluten or is it Botox? <laughs> Let's neither, talk about it. Neither. Well, it's gluten free and no Botox. Right. Do you think that do you think that a lot of people are just jumping on the bandwagon? I think it helps anyone to cut out gluten. It's really for inflammation to let your body just rest easy, let your organs rest and not work so hard to process things. To process gluten, it's it, it's very taxing on the body. Yeah, I think we should put some uh, vegan well, cheese in there. Yes. So put it so you just grab yeah, your grab a little grab bit it. and then here you go, go just start right. everywhere. 
Yeah, cover them, baby. That's yeah, make sure you get the edges. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Our parents and grandparents have been eating wheat for a really long time. Yeah. What's the ch what's the difference? What's the change now? Compared to the, the way our ancestors used to, you know, do it by hand, mix it by hand, create the dough by hand, you know, use stone to grind it down. Right now, we're using these machines. It's actually creating more more elastane, which is creating more intolerances. What matters to us? It's putting food in our bodies, putting the right fuel in our bodies is what matters. Yeah. Speaking of putting food in our bodies, yeah. should we check out the pizza? Yeah. I'm so excited to get skinny. Yeah. Okay. It's a little harder, okay, perfect. All right. Oh my God, this is delicious. Yeah, right? this is so good. So I have to say, I had an expectation that this was going to taste like I was giving something up, but it really doesn't taste like that. It, this tastes like an incredible pizza. I'm telling you, that one is. I'm vegan, fully vegan. Okay, so I think I'm gonna have to taste test all of these, just yeah. to oh, make yeah. sure that they're actually Let gluten free. Let me fix this one for you. Guys, this has just made my day, I really appreciate it. Can I take this to go? Absolutely. Still skeptical, but skinnier. After all that fat-free pizza, I feel ready to tackle the big one. The three little letters that seem to scare a lot of people. GMO. What do you think about GMOs? Which are... Do you, do you guys know what a GMO is? Uh, um, sort of. What is, what is GMO? What does that stand for? It's a term Americans made up. Do you guys know what GMOs are? Genetically modified organs. <laughs> ah, this one's bred up. I don't like GMOs. They're also damaging on a cellular level and stays in a cell and never can be expelled. Obviously, uh, nobody wants, um, you know, their cucumbers like this big because... I do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, have you heard anything about GMOs and how bad they are for us? Oh, yeah. We have scientists, so we know. Oh. So you guys are scientists. Okay, what are your thoughts on GMOs? They're not that bad. What are they gonna do to you? Like, what is the GMO gonna do to you? Do I don't know, you're a scientist, you tell me. Yeah, they're not gonna do much to you. I'm more afraid of MSGs, I think, than GMOs. Exactly. So what about people who say that they wanna eat, they don't wanna eat foods with GMOs in them? I'll let them starve to death. Well, you need it in order to supply the food that you need in the, on, on the planet. So, yeah. you know, by trying to limit anything like that, I mean, you might as well go back to the Stone Age. We have a tendency as humans to be like, oh my God, people are putting something in my food. The earth didn't make that. That's crazy. I don't want this in my body. But like the earth also made like cobras and like all sorts <laughs> of like lava and stuff that isn't really necessarily so good for us. We like through complicated processes end up like putting restrictions on things that would end up feeding lots of really hungry people because we believe one sort of blanket term is bad. Maybe you should host the show. <laughs> um, but I have to go get food. All right, so taking it to the streets didn't quite answer my question. Fortunately, Gary Hirschberg agreed to have lunch with me. Gary started Stonyfield Farms, the first company in the United States to ban growth hormones, whatever those are. He is now the CEO of Just Label It, and the go-to guy for getting the truth about GMOs. I started out on this quest because I was so confused about what I'm supposed to eat. I've been learning about gluten and what it does to our bodies, and that's led me into an inevitable conversation of GMOs. That's right. Uh, and it turns out that I genuinely have no idea what GMOs are. Thank you. You're in, you're in good company. Yeah. Break it down for me. What is a GMO, and why are they gonna kill me? Well, a GMO is an organism, so a, a crop or an animal whose genes have been manipulated in such a way that, that the genes from one very different species have been combined with another in a way that could not ha that nature doesn't allow. So is a cockapoo a GMO? Um, no, there's a difference between genetic manipulation and traditional breeding. When right. you take a pig gene and put it in a salmon, right. that's nothing that nature has ever allowed before. So it would be like if I slept with Brad Pitt and we created a baby, like nothing about that would ever be natural. That would never <laughs> happen in nature. It would have to be... I'm not gonna touch that one. <laughs> so up till now, the, the the, most of the genetically engineered crops have been food for animals. Now we have the first foods for humans. We have an Arctic apple that when you cut it, it doesn't brown anymore. Now, I don't know who was asking for that, but wow. it literally will not brown. Uh, we have a salmon that grows actually twice as fast as normal salmon. Today, now, GMOs make up 90% of processed foods that are out there. Now, they were first introduced into our food system in 1996, so not that long ago. We probably won't know for a generation or two what the impacts are. There are 
So you're telling me my kids are going to have three heads? <laughs> well, like ever so many new technological innovations in all kinds of parts of our lives, but especially in food, the jury is out and will be out, and essentially we're all kind of guinea pigs. I know that it would be better if I could give you a black and white, but the murkiness is the reason we need the right to know. Uh, our organization is not pro or anti-GMO. We are pro your right to know. You ought to have that choice. and. So, Most of the world has it, by the way, except here in the U.S. Uh, so guys, welcome. So the Marshall is a farm-to-table restaurant, and all that means is that everything you see on the menu is actually in season in New York State right now. Thank you. Give you some time to leave. Can, can I ask just yeah. how long you have been? How, how Almost long three years. I think September will be three and years. And from the beginning, you, this was how you were? Yeah, mm. farm-to-table. Mm. That's okay. great. Thanks. Thanks so sure. much. Of course. It's, well, ama looks good. it's amazing what's going on now. You know, when yeah. I started in 1983, I could have said what he said, and most people would think I was talking Martian. So here's what we do know, because I started off by disappointing you by telling you all that we don't know. When you look back at the propaganda around GMOs, you'll see all this discussion about yield. We're going to get higher yield. It's going to be drought resistance. We need it to feed the world. We'll have 9.6 billion people in the year 2050, and we need this new technology. Here's the funny little truth, which is that in the 20 years since GMOs were first introduced, there is zero evidence of increased yield resulting from GMOs. And so it hasn't actually been a success yet. So we have got ourselves a much, much bigger problem actually than GMOs here. 90% of the GMOs out there have been used to increase herbicide usage and specifically usage of a probable carcinogen. Now we're having to put in stronger and stronger compounds. We use build quick resistance, then we have stronger and stronger compounds. So we are on a cancer treadmill here. 70 to 100% of the rainwater in our country now contains a probable carcinogen. What so happens it's is, literally raining poison on yes, us. Yes, none of this should be a surprise to us because the owners of genetically modified seeds are chemical companies. Right. Now they've done a brilliant job of rebranding themselves as biotech. I don't think biotech. people know that. Yeah. Exactly. They call themselves biotech. These are companies that are in the business of selling chemicals. So what you have here is a profoundly effective business model for them. They sell seeds that they make a lot of money on. Then these seeds require more of their chemicals. So they, they, they have created a captive environment. And then on top of that, they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars to block your and my right to know. So they've eliminated the consumer from the whole discussion. So we don't even get to vote for whether we want this thing or not. It's, so, it's brilliant. I came here to feel better. And now uh, I, I'm actually a little scared. I don't know how the average consumer is going to be able to not be poisoned. You know, like I live in New York. I grab something at a bodega. You know, yeah. it's scary. When you can, you need to buy organic. Mm -hmm. It's one safety. Organic cannot use GMO. The reality is you can't buy everything organic, but you should buy some things. You know, dairy, meat, animals that use feed. Most of the GMOs are in the feed. That's an important, that's a critical place to start. If you can't afford or it's not accessible, then look for that non-GMO uh, label, the butterfly. I try to eat organic, but you know, every once in a while when I get to the grocery store, I see an organic vegetable and a non-organic vegetable, and depending on how cheap I feel that day, I'll, 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 buy, I'll buy the organic, but when I first started, organic milk cost twice as much as conventional milk. Today, it's more than conventional, but it's not twice. And the reason it's come down is because more and more people are buying it. Walmart and Costco and Target are now carrying organic goods. It's more widely distributed and more widely available. The number one way to bring the price down of organic and non-GMO is volume. We consumers have a whole lot more power than we may realize. These companies work for us. You know, when we, when we run an item past the scanner, we're voting. The reality is our everyday votes at, at restaurants and in stores, uh, in terms of changing society, count. And we will see affordability. And you look at a Brooklyn, you know, which is one, one of the largest cities in America by itself, right? Huge economic power there to shift the world. You know, we've spent a, a lot of time together and I've thrown way too much at you. And fortunately, you did still get to eat. Most people are sick to their stomach when I'm talking. so. Uh, but I have, I have a pretty, I have a pretty healthy appetite, right, good, good. except for gluten, wheat, dairy, soy, meat, <laughs> and, GMO, and GMOs. GMOs. Poison rain, hidden ingredients, corporate lobbies, Brad Pitt and me in bed together. 
there's a lot on my mind right now. The good news is, those who can afford to buy an organic apple here and there are paving the ground for organic to be accessible to everyone. And who knows, maybe one day our government will look out for us like they do in Russia and China. Meanwhile, it's time to face the ultimate test, grocery shopping. Panic is setting in. Someone's gotta have an app for this. Turns out Taryn Fixell does. Hi. Hi. I'm Amy. Karen. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's, I'm so happy you're here. I have no idea how to shop anymore. It is very overwhelming. Yeah. One of the latest tech ladies on the New York scene, Taryn recently launched Ingredient One to help you find the kind of food you want wherever you're shopping. I've just become afraid to eat anything. You're really not alone in that. I mean, it's incredibly overwhelming. There, there are 35,000 products in the store. Wow. Right? So you've got about 35 to 40 minutes to figure out what to eat. It's like one minute for every thousand products. Yeah. Right. Of course people are afraid of food. On one side, there's all of this food to choose from. A lot of it has a lot of really complicated ingredients that we don't understand. And on the other side, there are people saying, don't eat sugar, don't eat gluten, don't have GMOs. It's incredibly confusing and you've got to figure out what's right for you because we all have very different bodies, right? We all have different genes. We have different um, ways of absorbing foods. And I think 30 years from now, we're going to laugh at the idea that everybody should be following the same diet. What do I need to steer clear of? Well, I'd say there are things that you should have more of. Right? You want to have more vegetables. You want to have more fruit. Right. Now, if you don't like them, there are ways just to ease yourself in, and eventually you'll start to like more Like of just the tip. <laughs> so you're saying we could actually change our taste buds? Can yes. Yes. You know, we live in this incredible place where we have a lot of food available to us. Take that sense of fear that you have around food transform it into curiosity. All of this looks healthy, but it's not organic. So should I just stay away? Right, so it gets really expensive to eat all organic all the time. Right. And it's also not always available. So one really good tip, so how do you decide which of these should you, you should eat organic? Which one's brighter? Actually, it's the thickness of the skin. Ah, okay. Right? So an orange is less porous. What does the thick skin do? Um, it protects it from the pesticides and other materials that can be on it. Whereas this, a pear with a really thin skin or a blueberry with a really thin skin, is going to suck up all of those pesticides. Exactly. So I heard somewhere that dairy just means cow's milk and that you could actually eat sheep or goat's milk. Is that true? So, so dairy actually means milk from any animal, but um, there are a lot of people who find that the proteins in sheep milk and goat milk upset their stomachs less. You have to sort of see what really works for your body. So it's really just a trial and error thing? It is a trial and error thing. All right, so let's try a couple of these. At some point you've got to stop listening to everybody else and really listen to your gut. So if I'm listening to my gut, my gut wants pasta but I've been terrified of pasta for years. Well, if you right. really miss pasta, go for it. It's the 80-20 rule. Does that mean 80 pieces of candy a day, 20 vegetables, what are we talking? So it means being 100% committed to your dietary choices 80% of the time. So 80% of the time you're eating you know, fruits and vegetables and whole foods. Right. And then the other 20% of the time... Cadbury cream eggs, ice cream, and Snickers. Flexibility. I really like you. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to want ice cream. Like, all the time. Like, all the time. All the time. Sometimes you're going to make a bad Every food minute. choice. Every I always want ice cream. We're approaching ice cream. I mean... How do we even begin to tackle this? Because I grew up in a family where, you know, your meal was not over unless you ate ice cream. Absolutely enjoy ice cream. That's contrary to everything that, I, that I've that i heard. You know, that ice cream's so bad for you. Exactly. Sugar is bad for you. So don't eat it 80% of the time. Eat it 20% of the time. So you're saying one pint at a time rather than two pints? I'm saying a quarter of a pint at a time rather than two pints. You open this and you eat a quarter of this pint? I do eat a quarter of a pint. And then you literally because put the cap back on and put it back in the freezer? I do. You don't sound like you eat your emotions quite like some other people that I know. <laughs> So I think the answer is that every time I go grocery shopping, you have to come with me. I am not the definitive answer on grocery shopping. 
The challenge is that there is no definitive answer. It's really just about figuring out what's right for you and, you know, 80-20 rule. Right. <laughs> so, do you, need, you know, do, you need, do you need all of this? So, so let's look at our cart right now. Yeah. We're, we're about to shift from, you know, 80% fruits and vegetables to, and 20% chocolate into like way more chocolate. Let's do one. All right, all right. So I think we're in pretty good shape. This to me looks um, like a good week of food. If there's just one takeaway that I have from this, what do you think it is? Eat more fruits and vegetables. Okay. Eat less processed foods. There is no one size fits all diet. It's the diet that uh, you know works best for me, for my body. Is it's what you're saying. It's exactly right. What feels good to you yes, and I'll. what tastes good. You should enjoy your food. Um, so thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. So here's what we know. A lot of our food fears are misguided. We're actually making this a lot harder than it has to be. When it comes to making choices about what to eat, you gotta stop listening to everyone else and start listening to yourself. We here in Brooklyn might be annoying about it, but we also have the power to change our food system for everyone. And best of all, fat-free pizza is right by your doorstep. I know, I get it, it's not fat-free. Just give me this, people. Hey guys, I just became gluten-free. Do you want these Oreos? No, thank you. No? They're vegan. All right. Hey, I just turned macrobiotic. Do you want these Oreos? No? Okay. Hey guys, I just decided to cut out soy. Do you guys want these Oreos? Uh, I don't know. Are you sure? No, thank They're you. They're vegan. All right. I decided I hate Joy. Do you want these Oreos? No? Okay. Ha <laughs> ha